Moving on from the previous two async tutorials, I did promise that we'd build a fully functional blog site with image uploads and middleware and all the mod cons. In order to get there, we need to first start to use the AIO HTTP library. So let's go ahead and build the beginnings of a RESTful interface in async. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pip install AIO HTTP. Create two Python modules, one called server and the other called client. We start off by importing web from AIO HTTP. In order to create an async web server that responds to requests in the browser, we need to create a coroutine, a handler. What this does is accept a request instance as its only argument, and then it ultimately returns a response object. So the simplest web handler that we can write takes in request, and then immediately returns a response object assigning the text async server in Python 3.8 to the keyword argument text. So that's all well and good, but we still need to create our application. And we do this by assigning web.application to the name app. Application is a dict-like object, and one of the methods it has is add roots. The argument that we pass into this is a list assigning all the paths in the web address to the handlers that we want to handle them. So here, what we have is web.get, and we tell it that we want our handler coroutine to handle any requests that come into the root of the website. Having done that, we can end our app by running web.runApp and passing in the app that we've created. So in summary, on line seven, what we've done is we've registered our request handler on a particular HTTP method and a path. Having done this, we can run our server script, head on into our browser and type in localhost on port 8080 at the root of the website and see what we get. And as we can see, we have the text async server in Python 3.8 returned to us. And that's easy enough. So let's go a bit further. Instead of registering the roots like this, what we can do is actually use decorators and add the decorators at the start of our handler coroutines. And in my personal opinion, I think it's better to use root decorators as I find it a lot easier to see what's going on. So we'll comment away lines six and seven, and we'll move this code to another coroutine, an initialization coroutine. So this function has exactly what we had before, and it just returns the app when you call the function. And we can just quickly check that everything's working okay. So now what we do, at the start of our module, we create a root table def object and assign it to roots. Root table def is short for roots table definition, and it describes the roots by decorators, similar to how Flask does things. So the root table def object itself is very much like a list, and it subclasses from the abstract base class collections.sequence. So it has all the same methods that you would get in a list. But how you use it as a decorator is you can add the HTTP method that you want the handler to apply to in the decorator. So here, it's a simple get method. So we have the decorator roots.get and we pass in the path of the website that we want this to apply to. So as before, we're registering it for the root of the website. We then pass in this roots object into the add roots method of the app that we've created. And as we can see, we get the same result. We can have variables in the path, so for instance here we have language, and we access it through the request object that's passed in to this handler. So we call match info, then dot get, and then we pass in the variable that we put in the decorator as a string as the first argument, and an empty string as the second argument. So now when we type in, for instance, Java in the URL, we have Java assigned to the lang variable that we had in our program, or for instance, C++, or even Python. And there's another way to access information in the URL. What we do is we use the rel url.query.get method. And 
And then what that does is when we type in the URL, we can pass in a key and a value. Here, for instance, if we pass in a value assigned to the key other, then we now have access to that value. When we access our URL without anything assigned to other, we just get an empty string. But then when we assign information to it in the URL, we have our other information presented to us. Now we've talked about the get HTTP method, but using the decorators, it's very easy. It's very easy to, for instance, implement a post method. So here we have add lang as our path. And what we do is we await the post method of request. And then we have access to that data. So we call the get method. And we have language as the key here. And we're after the value which we'll assign to lang. And in order to access this and to use the post method, what we're going to do is write a client. So we've imported AIO HTTP, we've imported async IO, we assign our URL to URL, and we have a single coroutine, post lang. So this next bit is a common motif in async web programming, and we use an asynchronous context manager calling client session. And what client session is, is it's an object that encapsulates a connection pool, and then allows your application to benefit from this connection pooling. By using it as a context manager in this way, it closes itself at the end. It's a highly robust object, and the documentation on this is excellent. So we have our dictionary as our data, containing our key language and our value Python. With session alive in this context manager, we await its post method passing in the URL and our data that we've just defined. And then we can print the response that we get. So remember, coroutines have to be driven by other functions. And so we have asyncio.run and we pass in our function. In our terminal, we run our server. And then when we call our client, we can see that indeed we have Python added to our database. The actual adding to the database is something we'll cover in the next tutorial. So now that we've covered the basics and we've had three async tutorials, we're in a really good position to build this fully functional blog site asynchronously. And indeed, that's what we'll do in the next tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care and I'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe and share and show your support in any way you can.